In this video, we're looking at transverse waves on a string, and we're trying to figure out how do the tension and the linear density, in other words, the thickness of the string, affect the wave speed on the string. So just as a little reminder, what does it mean to be a transverse wave? I just marked a little spot on the string with a red pen. It means the actual physical motion of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of the wave velocity. So this little red spot that I marked well, in just a short amount of time, this part of the wave is going to arrive at that location, and the little red spot will be lower than it was before. Then this part will arrive, and the spot will be lower still, and eventually this trough arrives, and then this little higher part arrives, and the red spot starts to wiggle back upwards. So there's the transverse motion of the medium. Now that little marked spot on the string, it has mass, and what does it take to accelerate that up and down? It takes a force exerted by the adjacent pieces of the string. So when I try to figure out how do these factors affect the wave velocity, first the linear density. Well, the bigger the mass of this little chunk of the string, the slower it's going to accelerate. So I would expect that to slow down the wave velocity. To get precise, linear density, normally given by the Greek letter mu, is the mass per unit length on the string. It means the units of linear density are kilograms per meter instead of like with volume density that would be kilograms per cubic meter so just to really clarify the idea it's nice to look at a simple example I have a rope of length two meters and a total mass of 10 kilograms on that rope what's the linear density so you just take the total mass 10 kilograms over the length two meters and I get five kilograms per meter and all that means is that that rope every time I pick up an additional meter of it that's an additional five kilograms of mass it's just a way of talking about the thickness of the string again what determines wave velocity is how fast we're able to cause this little red spot to wiggle and the other major factor here is the tension in the string if you have a higher tension in the string then the adjacent components of the string can exert a higher force on that little chunk of mass and it should be able to cause faster wiggling and therefore a faster wave speed. So again, with a higher linear density, I should see a smaller wave speed. And with a higher tension, I should see a higher wave speed. And we see that from the formula. Now, part of this has to go unexplained because it comes from solving a differential equation. But I see the correct things qualitatively, that when the tension goes up, the wave speed goes up. And when I deal with a thicker string, in other words, a larger linear density, the wave speed goes down. And we'll wrap it up with an example. And in this example, I have a bass guitar string with a mass of 20 grams over a length of 0 0.9 meters. If you're paying really close attention, I just changed that from 30 to 20 because those are the numbers I have prepared. And in part A, I want the tension required to produce a given wave speed of 50 meters per second on the string. So in other words, I'm taking our wave speed equation in terms of tension and linear density and then solving that for T. I'm going to go ahead and get the linear density first and I have a mass of 0 0.020 kilograms, just making sure my units are correct, over a length of 0.9 meters. And when I run the numbers on this, I get a linear density of 0 0.0222 kilograms per meter. Okay, then I get into the algebra of isolating T. Square both sides. Multiply by mu on both sides. And now I can just plug in my numbers. And I kept a little extra precision in my calculation, and I got 55.6 newtons. If you use my rounded answer for the linear density, you get 55.5. In part B, that is a bit of a review example. We're told that the primary note that we hear from the string corresponds to a wavelength of 1.8 meters. You should notice that's twice the length of the string, and we'll get into why this is true when we talk about resonance. And I'll go ahead and post a link to that video. And we're asked for the frequency of the note in this case. So this is going back to the wave speed equation where we relate the frequency, wavelength, and speed. And in this case, I know the speed 50 meters per second. I know the wavelength. 
And when I solve for f, I'm going to get a frequency in 1 over seconds or hertz. That's something like a low B, but it's a little bit flat. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.